So next, uh, I would like to explain about this uh, pathogen, another pathogen, okay, another disease, okay, that is the citrus canker. Now, coming to this disease, okay, so citrus canker actually is stated to have originated from China. So first, it will, this disease of citrus plants, it has been observed in China. But now the disease, it becomes widespread in all the citrus growing seasons of the world. Okay, So sometimes the disease, it becomes so severe in USA that mass eradication, okay, so complete destruction of the, the disease plants or the entire orchids, it has to be undertaken so that the disease can be controlled because it has spread so much, it has become so severe. So this disease, citrus canker, is also it also causes serious damage in the citrus fruits growing regions of uh, India, China, Java and Japan. So these are the four countries by which this disease okay, of the citrus fruits is affected. But of course this disease also it has affected uh, other parts of the uh, world. So the host of this okay the host of this uh pathogen now we are talking about the host so the host is citrus oranticum okay citrus oranticum orantium sorry citrus orantium it is a sweet orange and also other citrus species so this particular uh, disease it usually occur it usually affect the citrus plant species. So the host is the citrus species, okay, citrus orantium and other citrus species. Now, let us uh, take a look at the symptoms of the disease. So the disease here, just remember girls, that it affect all parts of the plant, okay, all parts of the plant except the root. Okay, so here I forgot to mention that even the albugo candida, okay, which cause white rust disease, it affect all parts of a plant except the root. Okay, so even the inside this citrus canker, all parts of the plant they get affected by this pathogen except the root. Now, but the most susceptible region, okay, they are the leaf, the fruits, and the twigs. So these three parts of a plant are more susceptible to the disease. So on leaf, on the leaf part, okay, they the symptoms they appear as small lesions, okay, small lesions, watery round translucent spots, and the lesions they are raised. You can feel if you touch, okay, they are rough, raised, and become yellowish brown in color. And they appear first on the lower surface of the leaf. Okay, so just remember this, that they first appear on the lower surface and they gradually spread to both the surfaces of the leaf. So with the progress of the disease, the surface of the spots, they become uh, grayish and finally ruptured. As you can see here, yellowish brown, they become grayish okay and finally ruptures in the center you can see here in this figure ruptures in the center showing rough corky and crater like appearance okay bowl like appearance there is a crater in this uh in the in the center okay in the in this in the figure you cannot uh see properly but just remember when you take a look at the uh, symptoms in the leaf you can see the crater like appearance okay so the size of the spots they usually ranges from one millimeter to one centimeter in diameter and the lesions occurring on the petioles they cause premature defoliation you can see even in the petioles the infection it usually causes premature defoliation of the leaf. Whereas on the fruits, the lesions, they are almost similar. Okay, They are almost similar to those of the leaves except 
that the yellow halo, okay, the crater-like depression in the central region is they are more prominent than the leaf. The crater-like depression is more prominent in the fruits, okay, than the leaf. And these legends, they, uh, they coalesce to form elongated rough scabby regions, okay. I think you can see here in this figure in the fruit part that these uh, uh, these uh, spores, these uh, symptoms on the fruits, they have a crater-like appearance, and they coalesce. Okay, they they come together. You can see that they join together. They they are. Uh, together they form a mass as a mass or whole okay so these legends they often coalesce and form very irregular patches you can see here very irregular patches of rough and scabby raised areas okay so you can see it's like it's like the skin is covered in scab because these Unlike in the leaf, these uh, these infection, the infection, the symptoms, okay, which occur in the fruits, they coalesce. That means they combine together. They combine together to form one mass, okay, and they combine together to form elongated, rough, scabby uh, regions. And on large branches, okay, on large branches as well. On large branches as well, the the scabby areas can be found. The injury takes place only on the skin. Okay, the injury it usually takes place only on the skin, but causes no effect on the pulp or the juice. Just remember that this infection it causes, uh, it affect only the skin of the fruit, but not the pulp or the juice uh, so as you can see here it is the same okay the infection in the twigs the fruits and the leaves is the same but it's just that in the fruits as well as in the twigs these infection uh, infected part they coalesce okay they combine to form an elongated mass okay rough and irregular mass lesions Okay, which form you can see these scabby regions on the stem on the twigs as well as on the fruits except on the leaves there is no such um, the the symptoms the infected part they do not coalesce they do not combine but instead they appear as individual lesions okay with crater like appearance you can see here so now this uh, Okay, those are the infections, okay, the symptoms on the body plan. But the causal organism, now we will be talking about the causal organism. So this disease, now girls remember that this disease is not caused by a fungal pathogen. This is a bacteria. So this disease is caused by a bacteria, Xanthomonas axonopodes. Okay, Xanthomonas axonopodes. This is a bacteria which cause citrus canker in the citrus plant species. Earlier, this pathogen is known as Pseudomonas citri or Xanthomonas citri or Xanthomonas campestris. So if you heard these names also, Pseudomonas citri, Xanthomonas citri, or Xanthomonas campestris, it's the same. So, this bacterium, I want to talk about this bacterium. It is, uh, this is a culture plate, okay? The culture, the you can see this in yellow color. This is the bacteria which is cultured on a plate, on a culture plate. So, the bacterium, just remember, girls, that it is gram negative. Now, I think you have studied about the gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. And you know that gram-positive, uh, sorry, gram-negative are those bacteria that, that do not retain the crystal 
violet stain so they appear pink in the in the microscope because they cannot retain the crystal violet stain okay in the gram staining process now this bacterium is gram negative rod shaped aerobic and capsulated aerobic meaning it is the bacteria which can survive and grow in the oxygenated environment okay because there are other bacteria which are anaerobic anaerobes meaning they grow in a non-oxygenated environment where there is no oxygen but this organism it survives in the oxygenated environment and it is also enclosed in a capsule it is capsulated meaning it is enclosed in a capsule okay in a capsule having a single polar flagellum now what is a polar flagellum i just want to show you a polar flagella or flagellum is when one or more flagella okay suppose this is a rod shaped bacteria okay because this bacteria is a negative gram negative rod shape just i had mentioned and also it has a single polar flagellum polar flagella they are flagella which arise from either one side okay one or both the poles of the bacteria so suppose this is a bacterial cell as you can see here this is a single flagella now this bacteria uh, xanthomonas axonopodes which causes citrus canker is like this it has a single polar flagella this is also a polar flagella where the flagella arise from both the poles of the bacteri bacterial cell but as you can see here this is peritrichus flagella peritrichus meaning the flagella are distributed over the entire cell surface so girls this i just want to show you so that you will understand the difference between the uh, uh, so that you will understand what are polar flagella and peritrichus flagella so this bacteria which cause citrus canker it has only a single flagella and that is polar flagella that is uh, we call monotrichus okay monotrichus now this they grow in chains okay they grow in chains and they measure about 1.5 to 2 micrometer to 0.5 to 0.75 micrometer and as you can see here the colonies when grown in this uh, media okay this is a beef extract agar that is the nutrients for the for this uh, pathogen when they grow it on a beef extract agar media you can see that a single colony okay they are slightly uh, raised okay they are raised and circular also glistering that means they they are shining you can see here glistering or shining and amber yellow to yellow in color okay they are shining that is glistering and amber yellow to straw yellow in color so this is the characteristic uh, colonies of bacteria but uh, of course girl there are so many other bacterium which have a similar colonies so it's quite difficult to identify this bacteria only from the colony other biochemical tests should be performed in order to identify a particular uh, fungi or bacteria okay especially for bacteria but uh, this is just to show you the characteristic feature of the uh, colony of this bacteria so girls this is the one i want to show okay they are rod shaped and they are gram negative bacteria they appear pink okay inside the microscope so you can see a single cell of the bacteria they are rod shaped and they are arranged uh, in a chain okay they are arranged they grow in chains okay you can see here these chains they grow in chains and each bacterial cell it measures about 1.5 to 2 micrometer into 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 75 micrometer okay so coming to the disease cycle here okay the bacterium just remember girls like i had shown 
before also I had uh, mentioned and explained that most of the pathogen they enters the host epidermis through either through stomata or lenticels or through the wounds okay caused by the insect or any wounds which are there in the plant they enter through the wounds or in case of um, beef they usually enter through the stomata or the lenticels now this bacterium also it enters the host through stomata lenticels and also through the wounds caused by the insects okay the insects or the movement of thorns now this bacterium what happen after it enters the host epidermis it will uh, after it enters okay in the leaves stem and fruits it will it will start to uh, multiply okay it will multiply rapidly it is very rapid in multiplying after it multiplies rapidly in the intercellular spaces it will dissolve the middle lamella okay it will dissolve the middle lamella and establishes themselves in the cortical region so they establish themselves in the cortex okay of a plant by dissolving the middle lamella now for the growth of this pathogen again it's the same as any other pathogen that they require low temperature as well as wet weather so for this pathogen also a mild temperature okay around 20 to 30 degree and also a wet weather with uniform rain they are more suitable for the growth and multiplication of these bacteria okay that is the most condition suitable condition for their infection they can infect the host plant now just remember girls this is different from the citru from the white rust where we see that the fungi they mostly they can perennate in the soil as well as in the plant debris but this bacterium they cannot survive in the soil or the infected plant parts okay which the infected plant parts fallen on the ground which fall on the ground why because this xanthomonas particularly this one which cause citrus canker it is a very weak pathogen actually it cannot compete with other microbes as we know that in the soil there they, there are many antagonistic microbes like uh, when I had explained to you about the uh, early blight and dead blight, I had shown in the plate, if you remember, that uh, the antagonistic microbes, they inhibit the growth of other microbes. Okay, they can inhibit the growth of other microbes. So, same thing, since these bacterium, when they fall on the ground, they, they, their growth are actually inhibited by these antagonistic microbes antagonistic fungi or bacteria so the due to the antagonistic action of these other soil microorganisms so this xanthomonas it cannot um, it cannot survive in the soil as well as the infected plant parts which fall on the soil so the infected twigs with old lesions Okay, here now when there are all infected twigs okay which has lesions on the tree these will act as the primary inoculum okay these are the main source of perination now that means the spores of bacteria which are there on the infected twigs okay they will act as primary inoculum they are the main source of perination now the bacterium then disseminates these bacterial cell they usually disseminate by wind by rain or by insects okay that by insects which come and eat the citrus leaf and through the help of these insects or rain or through wind when they get disseminated and come in contact with healthy plant they will cause infection in those healthy plants however the disease 
is commonly disseminated into new locality okay through the infected nursery stock so there if there are nursery stock stock which are infected so if those are planted in the field they will cause infection even to other healthy plants so that is how the disease it is commonly disseminated okay but it is also disseminated through wind and uh, rain and insects and just remember that they not uh, they do not they do not perennial in the soil or in the dead plant debris in the plant debris so this is the dormant phase that is the perennating my uh, the perennating in the affected host tissue the perennating spores of the bacteria okay they remain uh, which are present in the affected host tissue so this is the dormant why dormant phase because in the dormant phase they do not cause any diseases they do not attack any host so in the active phase now the fresh that means when they come in contact with the host they the inoculum will they will be activate okay the cells will become active and they will start to divide so this fresh inoculum will form now they will get disseminated by wind rain and insects and when they come in contact and also through infected nursery stocks remember so they will cause infection again in the new host and this cycle can repeat itself several times and this is referred to as the secondary cycle which is similar to the first cycle